God has power you ain't never tapped into. That's why you must stay up under his armpits because that's when you really start to see the workings of the Lord up close and personal. Pat with Pat's Two Cents with God's Church of Love Online. And I just want to share with you what word is being, being spoken into your lives. Be encouraged. God wants you to know who he is. He's not a pansy, y'all. He's got you. Every single one of you. Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Let me say this real quick. Let me add my two cents. Listen to this. <laughs> I just love saying this expression. I don't know when it came to my mind, but basically, you ever see kids cling to their parents? Clinging. I mean, they're all up under their, their, their underfoot. They're all up under their parents. And I say, when we want to cling to God, we should be found huddled up all up under his armpits. And I think of that every time I see, he shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. My question to you, how much do you really trust God? Do you really, really really trust God. Really? <laughs> See, sometimes we think we trust him. Now, there are times when I go through my moments, I know I'm trusting him. And then there are other times I'm like, Lord, I trust you, but I'm not sure what you're going to allow in my life. So I get scared about that part, the unknown, the unknown factors of reality. And we have to take all of that to God. So what God wants us to do is cling. I mean, <laughs> oxygen shouldn't be able to fit between you and your Lord. You should be clinging to him for life. Literally cling to him for life. Mm. See, the problem with most of us is there are a lot of us who are born again Christians, but we are not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. We're not under his shadow. We're casting our own shadows. We're finding our own form of shade from the heat of the day. And it's difficult for us to trust an invisible God. Hmm. But the invisible God is more real than you and I are. He wants to be your shelter. He wants to be your refuge. He wants to protect you more than you want protection. He is our bodyguard, you know. When he says, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. You know what a snare is? A trap. Satan lays traps every step of the way. He's always trying to lay a trap for us. But you know what I love? Is when you're seeking God and you're clinging to him, you're consulting with him, mm -hmm, acknowledging him in all your ways so he can direct your path. He'll put things on your mind. He'll pull things out of your mouth that will make you speak things that are lined up with his will. And that'll make the enemy flee. What does the Bible say? You resist the devil, he will flee. So there are times you got to resist the devil with God's word. 
You got to remind the devil when he tries to tell you about your past, you remind the devil about his future. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Because a lot of times we give in to the fear. Let's go to verse five. Thou shalt not be afraid. Mm, that's a hard one right there. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day. Do you know how many obstacles we run into? I listen to, to what Lynn is going through trying to get her whole project going for the Lord. And we got up days and down days. If we let the down days overshadow the up days, we would give up. We give up the ghost on a lot of these things we're doing for the Lord. But if you look at the whole picture and you know that God said thus and such, and God is with you, God is for you, mm -hmm. and if God be for you, who can be against you? Hello. You know that God's hand is on it. Now, let me go to a, a, a story in Exodus. I want to just make this real quick. Because a lot of times we lose sight of these realities right there in his word. What happened when God told Moses to take the Israelites, you know, through the desert? They, they went through 40 years of wilderness wanderings. It should have taken 13 days. But it ended up being 40 years. Why? Murmuring, complaining, attitude, attitude, attitude. So they took a 13-year journey and turned it into a 40-year ordeal. Things had to die in their midst. People had to die in their midst. Because God wasn't having it. He wasn't taking that slave mindset into the promised land. So listen to this. And I, I got to add this. Thank you, Lord. When he took them to the promised land, he didn't just say, go on in and move in and enjoy. Every promised piece of property they had in front of them, they had to fight for it to possess it. They had to drive out the enemy to possess it. It wasn't just given to them like welfare. There are things in this life, the, as they say, new levels, new devils. God puts you in challenging situations. He'll take you by ways you've never been before. And if God said it, baby, you can take it to the bank. But this is what the devil does. The devil tries to discourage you. Be careful about that. The devil tries to discourage you with pitfalls and obstacles and delays and complications and situations, all kind of mess. And what he does it to do is to make you sit down and say, forget it. I give up. I'm not doing this. I know I didn't hear from the Lord. It's just, it's just too much coming against me. Well, for those of you who are struggling with, did I really hear from God? Let me share this. In the book of Exodus, when Moses was with the Israelites right against the Red Sea, and behind them in hot pursuit was Pharaoh and his soldiers. But you notice what God did. He put a chasm between them. There was a, a, a barrier, a hedge of protection, if you want to call it that. The pillar by night, pillar of fire. And that fire hindered the Egyptians from penetrating to get to God's people. Because God is true to his promise. As much as we doubt him, God is true to his promise. He's not a man that he should lie. And some of you need to remind yourselves, God said it, it's going to happen. So look at this situation. Moses, the children of Israel, following the Lord's directions, are in the center of God's will. 
and they feel like all oh, hell is breaking loose on them. Why would God put us in this precarious position? Sometimes, y'all, God puts you in that position because he wants glory. He wants you to know you didn't do it. Your brains didn't accomplish it. Your might didn't get it done. Your, your genius didn't happen on it. No, this was only the hand of God. So what did he do? He allowed the Egyptians to come within a certain space, but they could not touch his people. Could not. Could not. Now, what did God do? He tells Moses to stick his little rickety raggedy stick over that ocean. And the whirlwinds and the tornadoes and the roarings and the lightnings happen and the water is parting and is blowing on the sand so hard that the sand under the water, as the water parts, is becoming dry to be easily walked on, dry sand. They crossed over on dry land, y'all. Now, imagine how they felt. Behind them is the Red, is the Red Sea. On the other side are the Egyptians. You know how we always say being caught between the devil and the deep blue sea? That's where I think that came from. They have nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. But what did God do? What he always does. He made a way where there was no way. And his people crossed over dry shot, safe as can be. The water stood up on end. Walls of water on both sides. They're walking through safely. They were probably afraid that the water might let loose sooner than God wanted it to, but God is in control, y'all. Listen, no matter what's been coming against you, God is in control of your life, your destiny, and your purpose. Remember that. Hmm. So you got this wall of water looking threatening as you go through on dry land, and I'm sure they were moving as fast as they could. They get on the other end, and what happens? God keeps the walls of water up. And you're saying, no, Lord, close it, close it, so that they can't come in after us. But they did. The Egyptians come in behind the people. He removes the pillar. When God removes the pillar, it's one or two reasons. He's either going to destroy your enemy or He's going to teach you a lesson by a choice you made by removing the hedge. Those are the main two reasons God will remove your hedge of protection. But in this case, he removed the fire, which was their hedge of protection. And he allowed the time it took for the Egyptians to get right there to crossing on dry land. But then what did the Lord do? He wet and softened and moistened the sand so that it made it hard for the horses to maneuver and hard for the wheels of the carriages and the chariots to move in. So they're getting stuck and they're having problems and they're getting all clumped up together. And when the whole army was right smack dab in the middle, what did God do? He closed the waters on them. And what did he say afterwards? He said, the enemy that you see, you will see forever, no more, or no more forever, however he puts it. But the bottom line is, this is the last day you're going to see this crap. They will no longer exist when I get through with them. See, what you don't realize is when God is for you. Hmm. Having God for you is more powerful than having thousands and legions of armies against you. So let me go on and finish reading. I just want you to hear that. So when things go awry, when things go wrong, when complications come up, don't think, okay, this means that I, I didn't really hear from God. This means I stepped out and, oh man, I got myself in a mess. No, the Israelites thought they got themselves in the pickle too. 
but God made a way where there was no way. When you're in the center of God's will, God already knows the obstacles that are going to be ahead of you. So you need not panic. No more time for hitting the panic button. Oh, what are you going to do? Oh, Lord, help me. He's already got your help lined up. He knows the beginning and the end of your story. So there's no need for you to panic, y'all. Sometimes we have to pray that prayer. Lord, I believe, but help thou mine unbelief. We all go through that. But you keep your faith in God no matter what. No matter what's coming against you. Know that stay in expectation. God's got a solution for this. Because this is catching me off guard. But it's not catching him off guard. You hear me? God ain't surprised. Think about the story in Genesis, I mean, in, Mo, in, in Exodus, where God told Moses when he called him at the burning bush to go and tell Pharaoh to let his people go. He told him what Pharaoh's reaction was going to be, did he not? He told him what he was going to do based on every single time that Pharaoh hardened his heart. He knew what it was going to take, that it was going to take the death of Pharaoh's son to make him let go of his people. He knew the process, the process, the process. The promise was way over here. The solution was way over there. And we have to fight through the process. Remember, when you're in the center of God's will and you've got God's favor, don't fear the process because the process will glorify God and bless you in the long run like he did with Job. Seven years of suffering. The process was between the wager he did with Satan and the promise at the end. In between is the process. That's the hardest thing for us to deal with. That process is a booger, y'all. And we hate it. We as human beings hate it. We spend half the time licking our wounds. Oh, oh, woe is me. Oh. And then the other half the time, oh God, where are you, God? Don't forget me, God. Oh God, where are you? Are you paying attention? Look at me. I'm in a fix. I'm in a pickle. Help me. Help me. Help me, Lord. Mm -mm. No. If I'm sitting over there fixing you dinner, and you haven't eaten for maybe seven hours. You're really hungry. I'm fixing you dinner. You see me fixing dinner. Or you're at your house. And I tell you, come on over my house. I'll have dinner. Are you going to call me every 30 minutes? Are you really going to fix dinner for me? Uh, what are you fixing? Am I really going to be able to eat? I'm really hungry. Please don't forget me. Please don't forget to cook. Please. Are you going to do that? That's the way we do God. Think about that. That's exactly how we do God. All right, let's go on. Mm, mm, mm. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. I don't care what's going on, baby. God's got you and me. He's in control. He got the demons. He's got the devil. He's got all your enemies on the face of this planet. And he's got their number and he knows their numbers up. You don't have to worry. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You can take that to the bank too. Hmm. Verse seven, a thousand shall fall at thy side. Imagine being in the middle of a war zone and soldiers are dropping like flies. They're all over the place. Dead bodies scattered everywhere. Bullets flying, bombs dropping. And you're standing there. Nothing's touching you. No shrapnel, no cuts, no scrapes, no bruises, nothing. And you can walk straight, walking right through it. 
God knows how to make you invisible to the enemy, y'all. God has power you ain't never tapped into. That's why you must stay up under his armpits because that's when you really start to see the workings of the Lord up close and personal. A thousand shall fall at thy side and 10,000 at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. You can take that one to the bank too, y'all. Mm-hmm. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. See, God will set you up in a very a visible area where you can see everything that's happening to your enemies. You got enemies? Don't worry about them. Worry for them, but not about them because they can't do you harm, but God can do them harm. All right. Number nine. Behold, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy habitation. Therefore, listen to this. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. You hear that? No evil, no plague. Oh! What kind of a promise is that, y'all? We are impervious to the devil's attacks. Unless we walk into the enemy's camp, lay our weapons down, shedding our armor as we go, leaving it on the ground. Huh. Are you going to be strong in the power of his might? Prove to the enemy we are the army of the Lord and we won the victory? Or are you going to give in, sit down on the ground, whimper and cry and say, it's over. <laughs> Oh, it's all over the Lord. Forget about me. <laughs> huh. Is that is that gonna be your attitude? Hmm. Verse eleven, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. We are surrounded with angels that protect us from ourselves. You know, some of the choices we make in life, we would self-destruct. A lot of us would. Judge, uh, making choices based on our own emotions, based on our own little pea brains. Thank God for the angels God sets around us and assigns, assigns to us to protect us from our silly selves. Hmm. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Verse 13. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample underfoot. What does that mean? You're going to walk out and step on a lion? You're going to walk out and step on an adder? No. What it means is you have spiritual authority, supernatural authority. When I was walking down the street and the pack of dogs came on me and I was awake, this was not a dream. And I hollered, I bind you in the name of Jesus. It was like something knocked them into a daze and they were like, what was I doing? Where was I going? They were not coming to me to play. They were on attack mode. And God stopped them dead in their tracks just because I took the authority God already gave me. I didn't turn tail and run. I stood my ground and I bound them suckers in the name of Jesus. There were about 14 or 18 dogs, y'all. And it looked as if I disappeared like they were, where did she go? What, am, what was I going to do? Uh, I guess I'll turn around and go back where I came from. Why? The authority that God gave us. That is what you call treading on the lion and Adam. The young lion and the dragon shout, we trample under feet. That's what that is. It's authority. Y'all, oh my goodness, you need to take the authority that God has already given you. What is that in your hand? Didn't God ask Moses that? 
a rickety raggedy stick is all he had to his name. And God used that stick to do miracles. What's in your hand? What's in your wallet? <laughs> as the commercial says. Yeah, what's at your disposal? that God can use you to work miracles with if you would only believe and usurp the authority you've already been given. Mm, mm, mm. We're not to be mamby-pamby wimps or victims. We're not to be victims, y'all. We are to be victors. 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. God will always make a way of escape for you, but he'll also do inner healing and deliverance. I was delivered in my living room by myself. Nobody on the phone praying for me by myself. I asked the Lord a question. His answer was one word, rejection. I, my response to his one word was, well, Lord, would you get the rejection out at the root? That has had too much control over my life since I was a kid. Please uproot the rejection and get rid of it. Every crumb, every tentacle. And I went through two hours of dry heaving, howling, crying. Till I felt like I had lost a hundred pounds and then I, I was only left with a whimper. And God commanded me after that two hours to stand up and praise him. Then he instructed me on particular songs to play so he could minister into my spirit. And I've never had issues with rejection since that day that I had all my life. Plagued me all my life. Yeah, God's grace is sufficient. But there comes a day of reckoning when you can actually get delivered once and for all. Hmm. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. See, we're not impervious to trouble, y'all. We're not impervious to trials, to setbacks, to delays, to attacks. We're not impervious. Hmm. But God knows how to deliver us out of them all. Hmm. And make us come out smelling like a rose. You go through the flood and not be drowned. You go through the fire and not be burnt. That's God's way of deliverance. With long life will I satisfy him and show him. Or shall I say in the place of the word show, demonstrate. Show him my salvation. That's a promise, y'all. That, that is a phenomenal promise of good health, long life, and protection. That ought to lift your spirits right there. Now, here's another one. Let's go to Psalms 27. I'm not going to be long, much longer. Go to Psalms 27 with me. All right. <laughs> I wanted you to hear that before you heard this. People come against you. People spread lies about you. They spread suspicion. They treat you like you got a tail. They make your good be evil spoken of. They bite the hand that feeds you. Listen to this. I mean, they bite the hand that you're, that you're using to feed them with. Listen to this. Psalms 27, starting at verse 1. I'll read until I feel led by the Lord to stop. Hmm. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they, 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 they stumbled and fell. Not me. I didn't stumble. 
they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, 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 he shall hide me in his pavilion, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Who's the rock? Jesus Christ. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me when thou said, Seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. I'm going to stop there. You know, the thing we don't always get. <laughs> when God says, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. That means just surround it with, with foes. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Do you know... <laughs> I love that when he says, now shall my head be lifted up above mine enemies. When you're in a plane, listen to this example. When you're in a plane and you're going through turbulence and the plane is dropping and shaking and wiggling and wobbling and you think it's going to fall out the sky and crash. The thunder is 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 clamoring outside. You could just hear the claps of thunder. You can see the lightning and you're saying, oh, it's going to hit the plane. We're going to go down. Help me, help me, help me. No, 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 no. Calm your little happy hips down and listen to this. <laughs> when God's got you like that, you're in the plane, you're in the middle of the turbulence. How does the pilot Get out of that pickle. When he's dealing with ground control, ground control will instruct them to rise and maintain. Now, that means you rise up above the storm and you level off. What happens when you rise above the storm? The storm's beneath you now. It's not on top of you. It's beneath you. That's authority, y'all. That's favor. That's making a way where there is no way. You climb and maintain. And when you climb and maintain, what happens? When you level off and you're at a much higher altitude. Hmm. God will take you higher. Above your enemies, round about you. That's where the peace is. The peace of God that passes all understanding. You look down and you see the darkness, but above you, you see the sunlight. The rays of God are shining on you. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That's right. I don't care what the storm is doing. God has risen upon you. That's all you need to know. You don't need to worry about what's happening with them or what's happening with the with the humpkins and what's happening with the knuckleheads. You don't have to worry about them. You don't have to worry about your enemy scheming, plotting, lying, and talking. Nope. You concentrate on the Lord because the Lord will take you higher above your enemies above the storm above the turbulence above the torment above the obstacles he'll take you above baby <laughs> you know the higher you are the better your perspective think about it let me see how i can do this i want to illustrate something okay see my little can of nuts 
Imagine all of these nuts are people living down in this bucket. All these are people living in the bucket. Now, their world is in the, is in the, the, the cup here, in the can. Their world, their existence, their reality is down in here. They're crunched up together like sardines. They can't see what's happening on the side of the can. They can't see what's happening beneath the can. And most of them can barely see what's happening above. But you get one of these nuts. And they follow God's word and they rise up above the obstacle above the trial, above the issues in life. And oh my goodness, it's a whole new world. A whole new world with new horizons to pursue. No one to tell us no or where to go or say we're only dreaming. There are no limits when you rise above. When you take God by his hand and ask him to lift you up and out, you have a whole new perspective. You've got new sights. Now you've got a whole new horizon. If this is all you got, you don't have much hope. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when you rise above and you look down and you look around, you see there's a whole new world out there that you would never have considered had you not followed God's lead. Rise above the storm. That storm is not your reality. Weather, storms, wind, rain, they only come to pass. It's not a permanent fix, y'all. Everything you're dealing with will sooner or later come to pass. Trust God in everything. He's got you. You be encouraged. God isn't scratching his head saying, uh-oh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Oh, no. No. God's not panicking like he told Moses. He knows what's going on. He knows what's going to happen in the thick of the process. He knows it. We don't. But as long as we keep our hand in the hand of the man who stills the water, keep our hand in the hand of the man that calms the sea, take a look at ourselves and we can look at others differently. Keep our hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. You will be all right. It shall be well with you. You won't have anything to worry about because God will surround you with songs of deliverance. Do you hear me? Be encouraged. God's got your life. He knows how to undo the damage from your past. He knows how to rectify your present. And he knows how to prepare for your future. If only you'd stay up under his armpits and walk in his footsteps, you'll get there. A lot quicker than you will, scheming your own way, charting your own course, creating your own map. Hmm. Amen? God bless you. Be encouraged. God's got you. He's got you better than you ever imagine. Just stay close to him. He's got answers for you. He will minister to you. Get in the habit of saying, Lord, lead me to scripture. Talk to me. Oh, he will. There are times I don't even know what's going on. I have no idea. And God will let me know. Folks are talking about me behind my back and show me how to pray about it. But not worry about it. Just pray about it. And God lets me know every time he's going to steal it, baby. He's going to rise me above and he's going to steal it. He'll do the same for you. There's nothing, no problem, no situation that God cannot deliver you out of. Amen. As long as you're in his hands, he will demonstrate to you his salvation, as he says in the verse, the, the last few verses of Psalms 91. He will show you his salvation because you are safe. In his hands. 
God bless you. Amen. And I'm done.